In this episode of the tripod. You know, okay. I'm definitely shot in Dingle, Mark. I frequent the area every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I partake in the photography there, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the tripod. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 49 of The Tripod. My name is Sean O'Reardon. I'm joined by Kevin Hennessy, and I'm also joined by two of, I'm not going to say just Kerry, but I'm going to say Ireland's finest photographers. And by God, if the Americans love the accents on the podcast today, they're going to love it even more now. Oh, <laughs> so yes. they are, because they have two Kerry men on the podcast. I'm joined, we are joined, I should say, by Michael McKillicuddy and Mark O'Brien. Lads, how are you getting on? Michael, we'll start with you. Hey, Sean. You Hi, Sean. Hi, Kevin. Oh, thanks. Thanks. All right, thanks Michael. What is the crack? All is all is very good. The sun is shining in Kerry. Life is uh, life is good, even in lockdown. So we're, the sun uh, is uh, always shining in Kerry. I'd say, is it, Mike? <laughs> well, most of the time, anyway, <laughs> that's what we like to tell people, anyway. So whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, no, it's it's been it's been a nice few, nice few days around here, anyway. And uh, yeah, I think there's a bit of fog for the morning as well. So should we? Can, oh, oh very see nice. What we can do. And, I used uh, to. I went to college with a lad, and he said, "There's only two kingdoms in this universe: the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Kerry." He said. Oh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> that was and his little thing. <laughs> that's his, that's his. Mark O'Brien. Mark was out in the sun today. He's uh he's as pink as a as a tomato. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> Almost as red uh, as all of my red things. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna be grand. I was like, what's the worst that could happen? And I sat there and I looked at it for like three hours and I'm like, I'm paying for it now, guys. I'm paying for it. Oh, It'll be right. worth it. It'll be worth it. Mark O'Brien. Life is good, Sean. Yeah, really looking forward to April the twelfth and road trips. Oh, yeah. stop. Road trips I back to Dingle. Wait. Wait, Cannot so wait. Because yeah. you were yeah. a man that really got into your exploring, didn't you? You would take off there on a Sunday yeah. and you would go down back roads and just no, no expectations, yeah. no preconceived no. ideas. Just see what you can find. Yeah, I, I found that I was becoming a bit of a creature habit where I was kind of getting up on a Sunday morning. It was like, okay, Upper Lake, Muckers House, and. Uh, Mm. I just it wasn't doing it for me for a while I was like nah I need to start branching out here and uh, try and find some of these hidden gems that you seem to keep finding on on Google Earth and I think the only mm. way to do it really is to um, get in the car and drive you know yeah, so Absolutely. that was my thing yeah just head off down around South Kerry particularly South Kerry because it's it's real old Ireland you know I can't mm. up those little back roads where you find those little kind of little buildings little old ruins and stuff you know so but i miss that i'm looking for i'm really looking forward to doing that now just getting in the car yeah. sticky, sticky on my favorite podcast and oh what, 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 what is that mark what's your favorite podcast um uh, my favorite podcast um oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna put him on the spot <laughs> like, mm, uh after you guys would have to probably be fake doctors real friends <laughs> Try what? fake doctors real friends that sounds all right. Of, the, yeah. That is a funny podcast. That is, that is a, a funny podcast. podcast. Yeah. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Can't wait I think, to Mark, I can 100% see the appeal there because it's almost like when you're traveling through a country like that, it's like it's like untouched Ireland. I mean, you, you could probably go back 100 years and it would still look the same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. the beauty of it. Like, and I think there's so much, there's such few places now left. Mm. Like, I think Mike, Mike would probably agree, would you? Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, back around South Kerry, all that area. It's just lovely. It's so, it's so, so nice. And just like just what Mark was saying there, um, it's just go exploring. It's it's get lost. Find yourself down a Borahine that you didn't expect to to, to go down, yeah. and, and come around the corner, and you see this a, a lovely little river or a small little lake or just some little scene or. Uh, something that's something that's different you know we've we've all shot the upper lake and moss castle and all these places and they're fantastic but mm. just to find something that you can kind of put your own little stamp on and that you're, you're not you don't have any preconceived ideas or notions about what what it should look like it's mm. um it, it, it it's definitely the way to go it's it's just it, it's it's just a lot of fun i think you'll even even if you don't get a photograph you'll come back with a smile on your face because you've, you've been exploring something that that is really untouched that is unspoiled it's lovely mm. that's it 100 and i think i think it, the places like the Upper Lake and Muckers House and the common locations that we all love to shoot are great places to build your base knowledge for photography because yeah, yeah. you probably don't have to be too concerned. Not that you don't have to be too concerned with the composition, but you know that 
you'll get a good image there. You know that you you have a composition you can shoot. And like I we often speak about this when you're starting off out in photography, you're juggling so many different things. Aperture, what settings do I use? Where do I focus, etc. And you're kind of worried and at least when the composition is taken care of, then you can kind of focus on your settings. Whereas when you learn those base knowledge, those, that those base skills in the common areas to shoot, then it's great that you can branch out like Mark is doing, like yourself is doing. Do you know, we'd highly encourage people to be able to do that. Like, do you know, it's kind of, I suppose, it's 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 a journey of progression, really. It is, and uh, I, I know Mark w- w- would remember it as well. But the, the old uh, sunbeam back in Rossway Beach, mm. which uh, w- which got destroyed a, a few years ago in, the, in those yes. bad storms, but it was one of those almost like those little photographic standards that when you start out with the camera you'd go and you take a picture in the in the midday sun and wonder what am i doing wrong and as you as you progress uh, you know you, you find yourself improving all of the time and it was it was almost a, a way of measuring yourself uh, and i suppose a lot of these these places are like that you can you can uh, as you said the 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 composition is there so you can sort of judge yourself against others to see how how you're getting on have you have you got the exposure right have you have you got enough depth of field whatever the case may be mm. um so th- these things these things have their have their place all right but then it's just go out explore and have fun yeah brilliant absolutely lads tell me like where did it all start for for you two then photography wise we'll go with mr mark o'brien first of all um where, where did, you know what what started mark just from being mark to mark o'brien photography well, well <laughs> I suppose, Kev, um, for me, it, well, I suppose it all started back in probably 2015, 16. Um, I always used to just use a phone. Just uh, anytime I was out, it was always the phone was always with me. And um, I found that I was taking pictures that obviously that I liked, but probably weren't up to the quality that I wanted them to be. And then that's when I decided to get my first digital camera. Um, what and- was it? It was a Canon 1200D with a, with a stock 18 to 55 lens. But I wasn't long. I think I ended up getting a Tokina 11 to 16, but pretty soon after. I wanted to go wide. Everything had to be yeah, wide. Yeah, we all loved it. Was wide like, I was like, it was like, it's like, you go to Google and you're like, landscape photography, wide angle lens. So I was like, what? What is the widest I can get? I want to shoot the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and it was like, and I was like, you know, I mean, I think that's when I got in touch with Mike and the likes of Adrian Healy. And Mike was like, like, Mike is an encyclopedia. He was like, look, what's your budget? What do you want to do? And he's like, boom, 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 this is what you need. And I was like, okay, 11 to 16, add to cart. And uh, the following week I was out and I was shooting these massive vistas. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and now, I mean, it, rare, it rarely comes out of the bag. I hate using it unless I really yeah. have to, unless I really have to, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but that, that's probably when I started kind of, I suppose I didn't really start taking it fully seriously until I started kind of investing more time in workshops and in traveling. Um, that's really when I, I suppose I, by putting money into these, I was kind of putting um, knowledge into myself. And that's really when I started kind of taking it a lot more seriously. Um, nice. So I just kind of, at the start, I was, you know, like everybody that starts out, uh, you wing it for a little bit because you're nervous and you, you don't want to be bugging anybody or asking for help. But, you know, uh, eventually I did. I asked like Mike, me and Mike, well, Mike is one of my first mentors, Adrian Healy as well. Like, you know, and, uh, like I just learned from these guys, literally like just like literally looking over Mike's shoulder. What is he shooting? Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> and then back up That's here. why I have all the wrong settings set up. So. <laughs> 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 my, Mike's got my, Mike's Mike's dial has got like d- dummy settings like D for dummy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then back Mike, to man. <laughs> Mike shooting the sunrise and I saw ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, oh, it's that bright you won't see the noise it's fine yeah, yeah it's like, why is this so bright mike no no it's good it's good Six thousand four hundred ISO. so keep going you got this oh, that's good. <laughs> but uh yeah man it's just uh, like really i have to say like i have to give a big shout out to mike and i mean like, i've been championing mike for a long time on instagram and to you sean and anybody that that knows him hands down probably one of the best least known photographers in the country like you know 100%. so so to learn to, to, to learn from mike was a privilege like you know so i like to have him as a mentor and to be able to like have him guide me and kind of get me you know up the ladder was 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 great you know gave me real confidence in what i was doing you know mm. i'm gonna mm. go as right as you in a minute mark so uh... <laughs> 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 that's what he was hoping for where you know it's... mike would say mike, mike the, the checks in the post i've yeah. never got the check <laughs> 
It's well deserved. Yeah, I'm, te- well I'm, deserved. Sending, I'm sending the PayPal through there now. So. <laughs> it's like, no, Revolut, Mike, Revolut, Mike. This is where we're at now. Revolut, it's, okay. it's well deserved, Don, because like, Mike, we were just talking before we came on that the, the last time I met you was just a brief visit in Clarny last, this time, well, I suppose a month ago last year when yeah. we just got into lockdown. And me and Mike said, God, when, when we can meet up there now in a month's time, we, we will, you know, when all this madness is over and we still haven't been able to do it, you know. So I was planning on picking your brain on a shoot, but you know what, Mike, I'm going to use this opportunity now to pick your brain. Oh, over God. Next, <laughs> over so, Mike, just, over just the next go grab your camera so. there, please, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Mike, where did it all start for you? Oh, God. Uh... Uh, I suppose I've always had a bit of an interest in in in, in photography way way back. Um, I suppose back in the even in the eighties as a as a kid and all the the probably every household had one of those Kodak Instamatics and you know that that type of thing. And I was always interested in uh, just just kind of fascinated by it. Oh, Sean, you're probably too young to know what the eighties were, but there were this <laughs> yeah. in the long I long am. ago. Yeah, uh, Mike. Mike, if you didn't know, I'm the youngest horse of the tripod. So yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I was, I, was kind, I was kind of suspecting. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, were you born in the nineties? Yeah, I'm ninety four, man. Oh God. That yeah. Ninety four. <laughs> I wish this wasn't water, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do want drinking the beer. You're all in the water. 1994. Uh, 94, yeah. 6th of January, 94. Yeah. That's yeah. Vintage that's, year. That's tough, <laughs> tough to take. Great, great year. The world, as my father says, the world stopped that year. <laughs> when I was born. <laughs> uh, but go on, Mike. Go on. I don't. I don't. I don't remember those old cameras. You don't no, I remember. Don't, I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, don't but, but, uh, I like no, the sentiment. I, I, I used to. I used. I used to. I, I used to like kind of trying to trying to take photos, and I mean, I would chop everybody's head off in in these pictures. I mean, uh, yes, like, it, was, it was worse than the French Revolution. Like you know, just you know, <laughs> heads cut off every adult. Um, but um, I just, I, I just always kind of um, was just interested in, in 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 cameras. And my dad used to work in the the Great Southern Hotel in uh, right in the middle of in town and back then uh there would be a lot of photographers just basically kind of waiting around and uh, uh for, for for the tourists and they, they'd uh, they take their photos so they knew a lot of them and um they I, i'd be you know be, they'd be chatting away and i'd be looking at these massive cameras on their on their shoulders and what do all these letters and numbers and all these kind of things mean yeah and um so uh, I suppose it was just it wasn't really until the kind of the digital era really that I I, I decided I'd I, I take the plunge and uh, I got myself a, a Fuji what was it a Fuji S three thousand three point two megapixels uh, oh, beast a, beautiful a beast <laughs> and uh, yeah I I just I I kind of found that yeah I I really enjoyed it and mm. whereas I suppose when I was taking these these pictures on these little point and sh- this little point and shoot back in the day at least with the with uh, with digital I could kind of figure out what am I doing wrong and I could I could correct it there and then so I just found that I just really really enjoyed it and. Mm. Um, yeah, I've been chancing my arm at it ever since then, really. I've right, been more than chancing around now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, if you're chancing your arm, we're all only taking the camera out of the box. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I always love hearing about kind of how it started out because some people, I I genuinely think some people are born photographers. Like they're just born with the talent, or they're, they're, they're it's always there. And perhaps someone in the family has always had it. You know, um, I suppose I've I've always just had a fascination with photography. I, like, I I always say like I love to take photographs, but I never had a camera. You know, I never had one growing up. Like we used to buy the the. the, the disposable ones and you go to the chemist then and joy you know, get developed like and sure you'd have pictures of a hedge or something like that or yeah. joy would be black or joy would just be dark and so it's really interesting to see how people started out um the fact that you like those cameras that you're saying your father used to see or like the photographers used to have were they the ones where like they'd have to set it up and they'd be ma- like were they they were obviously film cameras they weren't digital cameras yeah. like were no, they no 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 they were this you know, like were, the eight by ten slides uh, like and oh, they, there was a, there was a few of them and there was a few slrs as well you'd see there would have been a couple of the minolta's and canons and nikons and, and yeah uh, and these these th- th- these types uh but yeah but some of them were big bulky beasts i mean they yeah. just you know <laughs> you could see that almost like the the arm that they were carrying it on was so much bigger than the other <laughs> <Yeah>. arm <laughs> that's bad that is bad i, I suppose that's 
so now you've started out in photography, right? What's the next step? So, like, obviously, with anything in life and not just photography, there's motivation involved. Do you know what I mean? And there's kind of a thing that has to get you up in the morning or it has mm. to make you stay out late at night. Or, you know, just something. We've all been there where we're just not feeling it. We're not feeling like getting up and getting the camera and going out and putting on the boots. Do you know? So, like, I suppose it's a hard question, but, Mark, what is your motivator for photography? Like, is it, uh, you might not be able to pinpoint one thing, but you might be able to kind of give us your insight into it. Like, what's your kind of motivation? Um, I suppose, Sean, it's, for me, it's the expectation, you know, it's, it's, it's the kind of, it's the looking at the forecast the night before, you know, flicking through the apps, texting you, kind of going, man, I wonder, is it, is it going to be, will there be fog? Will there be fog? <laughs> that, that's the common one, yeah, will there yeah. be fog? Will there be fog, Sean? People think I'm the fog guru, like, and yeah. know, just how lucky I get, that's well, all it is. is. Man. It's just, I think, and I think it's like, it's, you just, you get that buzz and you get that little, that, that little tingle of excitement where you're like, oh man, that could yeah. potentially, it could potentially be good in the morning. And then you like, you're like, or it might not be, but I don't want to stay in bed just in case. So you go and you set your alarm for like three o'clock in the morning to give you down a Google and Barrett for maybe five, just to get like blue hour. And yeah. like you, just, you really don't know what you're going to get like when you're, when you're driving on the road. Mm. Uh, so for me, that's it, man. It really is just a case of, you know, the, the not knowing and the hoping. And then if it all works out, obviously the elation. And, and I suppose years ago, I would have looked at it, you know, if it didn't, I would have been disappointed but if, I suppose as I've gotten a little bit older and a bit more experienced, I just look at it as an experience. You know, I don't come away going, going, ah, why don't I stay in bed? I look at it all kind of going, okay, I'm here. It's a still a beautiful scene. I got a bit of fresh air. Right. You're doing, you know, you're doing something that other people don't do. Like, I mean, when the rest of the world is asleep or in bed, you know, turning right. over for the next 40 rings, you've already accomplished something. You know, you've gotten out of bed, yeah. you've driven, you've driven X amount of hours to potentially capture something beautiful, whether you get it or not, makes no difference. Mm. But the fact that you've made that effort already kind of puts you one step ahead of everybody else in the day, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. If that, if that for me, I just, I just find that like it, it, you, you hit the ground running then for the rest of your day, regardless yeah. of whether you get, you get an image or not, you've, you know, you've, you've made that effort, you know? And uh, I think like, as you as you continue to do that, it gets easier. It doesn't become a chore to get out, to get out of bed at, four o'clock in the morning to be back in Dingle at six o'clock in the morning for sunrise, you know, it doesn't because, you know, because you do it because you love it and you, and you hope that you get something as your reward for giving up early, but you know, irregardless of whether you get it or not, um, you still made the effort. And I think that just kind of, you know, that's something that you just, that's ingrained in you then like, you know, it's, it's it, like I say, it's not a chore, you know, when you do something you love, when you do something you love and you're passionate about, like, like all of you guys, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's easy to get out of bed at three o'clock in the morning. It really yeah. is, you know. Yeah. Um, so you know, like and, <clears throat> at times, Mark, you're kind of saying that, you know, not, not it's like it's second best, but like if, if you get the shot or not, it's just like, it's fine. I'm here. I'm in, mm-hmm. this, be- I'm in this beautiful spot. And yeah. yeah. Like that is such a good way to look at it. You know, it really is because as you said, like back in the day, if you've made the effort to go to a place and you don't get the shot, like it can be disheartening um, if you let it. If you let it get to you. If you let it, yeah. And, and I think, I, I think uh, you know, I, I particularly see with people when they start out, they get really like down in the dumps. You know, if they make it, let's say you go to the Cliffs of Moor from Killarney like, for sunset and let's say it doesn't pan out, the horizon is full of haze and uh, you, could, you could go home feeling really sorry for yourself, but man, you just spent an evening at the Cliffs of Moor. I mean, come on, yeah. like, yeah. there's worse places yeah. to spend an evening like watching sunset, you know? Yeah. So you, whether you get it or not, you know? Like just yeah. be glad, just be glad that you get the, the you're privileged enough to be able to stand there and look at that scene. Because there's other people that don't get that, like particularly people in Monaghan look at Conor Finnegan. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, yes. Jeez, that's brilliant. I wasn't, I wasn't even planning that. that that's great. Any, I was Sean. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Any podcast you can enjoy a bit at Monaghan is a great podcast. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, oh, Mark, you uh, you actually. I think just in that in that little um, soliloquy there, you inadvertently admitted that your favorite time to shoot is sunrise, the same as me of the of the day. Oh, I, I, well, yeah, I, I don't think, think it is. I don't know. I don't know because 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 I'll be honest, Sean. If, um, I prefer sunset for a simple reason that like and you and me even up back in Jingle where you get you have the golden hour and I mean mm. that 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 sweet hour before sunset. So mm. potentially you'll capture some amazing images there, and then if you get a decent sunset. That's the icing on the cake. Whereas I find with sunrise, it's so quick. If you yes. don't get if you if you Wait. get nothing 
that's it. It's gone. Like, and I mean, like, I mean, then you're, you're into like harsh light, yeah. really then like, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're putting all your eggs in one basket for sunrise. Whereas in sunset, you potentially have that hour beforehand where you definitely are going to get something if there's decent side light or whatever. Um, yeah. So I, I, I definitely prefer, you know, sunsets for sure. You yeah. know, sunrise. I can see, I can see where you're coming from. I'd almost break it down as like, if you're nailing shots at sunrise, you really have your eye tuned in for composition because mm-hmm. you don't have a long time to pick a composition because you're most of the time at sunrise you're somewhere around in, in the dark yeah. and you're just hoping that like when that blue or the ambient light comes you're kind of like okay that looked nice and you actually have to preempt that okay when the sun rises the light is going to hit that particular composition and it's going to look nice and if you get that wrong generally at sunrise there's no time to change like there's no, no time to kind of unless no. you want to you know we've all been there or we've been running down the beach with a tripod over our shoulder in the, welly, <laughs> in the wellies like you know trying to find another composition but um I, I can totally agree at sunset then you have your like yeah i love the goal like i love the goal i love side light anything with side light I just oh love it. yes like, you I, do shawnee yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just gives you that time to to pick like but for me, sunrise, I know we're going off topic, but look, this is the tripod. And we I'm just do shocked. It. We just do what yeah. we want. Um, <laughs> sunrise is like when you're up at sunrise, generally there's no one else around. And it almost feels like you're just a step ahead of the world. And like there's, there's no one else exists at that moment, only you and the landscape. Like, do you know what I mean? That's what I love mm. about sunrise, particularly those magic. And I have fond memories of Killarney for a particular reason, just like those magic misty mornings of, oh, at mm. sunrise. It's just, it's, you know, it's incredible. It's incredible. But um, Mike, your kind of your motivation for photography is this is this is it kind of coming from a particular time of day to shoot, or is this kind of more intrinsic? Or kind of give us uh, your insight. Money, money and women, isn't it, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> if there's any man now, it is not. It, it's no. definitely the, geez, the most humble gentleman no, ever. <laughs> and I'm also my, my wife will probably be listening as well. So <laughs> Hello, hello, Mrs. Mack. I do apologize. Deny, just, deny, just deny. So you know, my name is Kevin, and I am the trickster and the jokester of the podcast. I meant no harm. Michael is a gent. And oh, I, I do apologize. Yeah, I'm, I'm in trouble now. Uh, danger. No, danger. <laughs> Uh, no, I, just uh, just Max Max um, Max Max Tossens there. I loved everything he said. Well, apart from the Conor Finnegan thing, you know. But uh, <laughs> uh, who the uh, fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and he, I, I I totally agree as well with with, with all of that. Um, it, it's it, it's just that that adventure, that expectation, uh, hoping that something kind of works out. And again, totally agree that you know at the beginning you kind of your uh, your. If you don't get the shot, you're you're annoyed, you're cross, you're you go home mm. disappointed. But as you as you I suppose mature in your photography, you realize it's all a part of a learning process, um, and you um, you can enjoy you can enjoy just being out and about. Uh, so that is and that is a that is a big part of it for me as well. Uh, I suppose the other part actually is um, there's a headspace element to it. Um, you know you know just being out and about like that, uh, as you say, kind of getting a, getting a head start on the day. It just feels really, really good. And I know uh, my wife has often said, you know, that any time that I ever go out in the morning, when I come back, no matter if I get a shot or not, I just, I'm always in good form. You know, I just, you're kind of ready to face the rest of the day. And uh, you just have that kind of, sort of, you get those kind of good vibes from uh, from being out uh, yeah. in the, yeah, kind of in the morning time. Uh, I would prefer a morning shoot myself to an evening. Um, but, uh, I, and I think perhaps maybe because I just like the challenge. Uh, as you say, it's uh, things change so so fast, and you don't mm. get uh, a whole pile of time to uh, to kind of correct for any misjudgments or errors or anything like that. Uh, so I, I I do I do like that. I do love those kind of nice cold crisp crispy mornings and uh, just kind of the expectation of we're back to fog again, um, mm. uh, kind of maybe some nice nice color in the sky that that type of thing. I I, I love kind of the change from blue or to. Uh, to, to sunrise and, and, and that yeah. golden hour afterwards i just i just love that um, and all of this as well it's always a learning process you're always learning something new even if you don't get the shot you'll realize okay here's my mistake here's what i did wrong That's so it. it's it, it's yep. it's you know it's it's always be learning it, it's just a constant it's a constant journey there's no there's no end point to it so you will always get something from uh, a trip out uh, sunrise sunset whatever it is if you're just open to the fact of i suppose owning a mistake, realizing what you've done wrong, wanting to learn from it. And next time out, you'll overcome it. 
Yeah. And you have to make peace with the fact that you won't always get the shot, don't you? And I think when you have made peace with that and you're comfortable with that, you'll enjoy it an awful lot more because it does. We've all been there where we've been incredibly frustrated that we haven't gotten an image. And particularly, like, let's say if you're working, like, which we all are, like, none of us are full-time professional photographers as much as we'd lo- all love to be. Um, so, like, you could be in work all week and you're planning this shoot for a Saturday morning, let's say, and you might have driven two hours to go, go and get this shoot and you don't get the image. You have to drive two hours back home. And, you know, it could, it could be frustrating when you haven't gotten the shot. So I think when you do make peace with the fact that it's more about getting out and enjoying, and if there's anything that will very quickly let you know that you've made a mistake it's photography uh that's yeah. one thing i found out it'll it'll find out your weakness in terms of your composition or your settings and it'll tell you and it'll slap you in the face and okay this is what you need to do right the next time it so does. it sure does it's almost like a diagnostic every time you go out and shoot like yeah it is and i think it's just it's uh it, it's just kind of just always evaluate just always kind of uh uh, try and take something from the from the experience and uh, yeah it, it'll it'll serve you well 100 percent, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, and michael should look while you're there like do you feel at the moment you, you have a style because a couple of weeks ago we obviously spoke about having a style and how it, it can be quite important to have your own style. Orton. <coughs> <laughs> i was wondering who was going to say my bad, <coughs> my bad. not covid <coughs> <Orton>. <laughs> Someone get Mark some water. Oh, God. It's um, this or this Orton virus is a bitch. <laughs> What's Orton? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. <laughs> um, oh, Mike has the Gaussian blur on the speed dial on his phone. <laughs> I actually do have an action in Photoshop set up for it. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do uh, I, so it's all the one. It's all good. Uh, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I suppose, well, thanks very much, guys. Actually, for uh, for for mentioning me a few times and uh, the kind words on us. And uh, Mark, I hope the cough uh, heals up soon. Well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, 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 the the big thing I like, I suppose, is there's there's certain kind of conditions out in the landscape or certain kind of light that I like. Um, I suppose just something that's maybe that's rel- relatively bright, but somewhat kind of soft or diffuse, or, you know, that, that kind of way. Um, and that can be a little bit difficult at times, I think, to, to try and recreate digitally, because I think our, our cameras these days are, are so clinical um, that, you know, mm-hmm. that it, it can be difficult to, to sort of get that softness um, that, that, that we can see with our eye, because our eyes are so much so much better at, at being able to 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 kind of notice those little those little variations so what i try i suppose and do is 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 bring that back into the to the scene uh where i can where, where i've seen it um uh i suppose that yeah that that would be the that would be the main thing that i do uh and it's it, it's sort of blending that i suppose with a certain level of i suppose of contrast kind of dodge and burn kind of the, the classic techniques um and I suppose where I see the softness with the Orton, I, what I also like as well is maybe trying to contrast that with kind of maybe harder textures um, elsewhere within a scene. So if there's rocks, you know, just having those that little bit uh, more defined. So again, it's, it's kind of working a contrast in a different way, kind of, uh, kind of harshness versus softness as opposed to maybe kind of darks versus lights. So mm. that's, that's kind of what I, what I like to try and kind of bring into the, bring into the image. Um, I, I tend as much as possible, not not hundred percent, but work just with with, with one, uh, with one exposure. Um, so I, I I don't tend to do a lot with um, with kind of multiple exposures, even though I, I at the time I will often shoot kind of multiple exposures just to make sure that I get the right the right final image. Um, but I I I, I tend to just uh, I I find myself kind of clumsy around uh, kind of working with multi exposures. So. I try and kind of work it as much as I can within within one uh, one shot, um, but yeah, that's I suppose that's my 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 main thing really is, is is kind of working with contrasts, both in terms of contrast in textures and contrast in in light uh, to try and to, to try and kind of I suppose draw the eye or you know, whatever they whatever 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 they call it these days. Um, but it's it, it's it, it, I think that is 
that that's the that's the key for me that's what I, I i like it's certainly something that i've developed over time um i would look back at maybe some old photographs and i'd see the beginnings of something and i've you know realized that okay i've i've developed that over time or i've added things to it so it's probably something that's evolving all, all, all of the time so perhaps in in two years time we could be chatting and it you know it could look it could look quite different um Very but true. You know, it's it, it's just a kind of an, an evolving style or an evolving um, uh, uh, a, a way of working, uh, both mm. in terms of out in the field and also also post processing. Mm. Um, and I think what, what's nice as well is um, to be able to kind of work an image that is very different as well, uh, something that isn't necessarily going to suit the art in effect or the the kind of the, the typical thing that that I, I'd like to do. Because they can often be the, the the images that will will teach you something something new or something another type of style that you want to want to incorporate into your workflow. So, yeah, as I say, it's 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 an evolving evolving process. Yeah, and it's very much about becoming comfortable with a certain workflow, I suppose. My goodness, you know, and it's and like comfort kind of sometimes it can be seen as kind of like laying back and kind of you know not progressing anymore but like i don't see it that way in photography I think when you're become, when you become comfortable with a certain set of conditions of photography or a certain set of uh, a workflow then you know exactly how to adapt that workflow to different scenes yeah do you know what i mean like you know exactly what set of i speak a lot about like the integral process of post-processing and shooting in the field and like when i'm shooting when i'm out shooting like i know exactly how to set up that scene or shoot that scene to complement the post-processing they're going to apply in in lightroom photoshop do you know what i mean and yeah. i think for me that's about getting the best value out of your about, of your workflow as a photographer um and i think it's very interesting there you speak about contrast between textures and, and between like the Gorgeous, rocks yeah, like that's because when we think of contrast, I always think of light. Mm. I always think of tonal values or perhaps color, like in the HSL. So you were talking there, and one particular shot sprung to mind when you said that it was your shot in in Tark of the steps, and you had some. Is that the green? The the. So oh, the steps, and you had some gorgeous. beautiful diffused light at the top of the scene, top, yeah. yeah, and which was which was your kind of soft light, which you were talking about. Um, whereas it there's still light is present, but you were able to diffuse it or soften it in such a way that it became pleasant to look at, contrasting against the nice harsh textures of the rocks in the foreground. And uh, I looked at that and I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you know, I, was like <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was a, it was a stunning, stunning uh, image, thanks. and I think okay. it's really that's a really interesting, really interesting work, like, between contrasting of textures as opposed to just tonal value. You know, that's a really interesting uh, insight, Mike, and it it makes yeah. so much sense when you when you said it there. You know, that's um that's brilliant. Damn, um, I've given the game away. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was gonna ask, how did you do it? But you know what? I like uh, that's like asking a man, can you kiss his wife? So I'm just, I'm not gonna. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I won't go that far. Uh, Marco, your um, photo, your style, Mar Mark. We've often had a discussion about this, about style and stuff, and we talked about certain photographers. Me? Yeah, me and you. Yeah, you might remember, okay. it, but we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, style, Marco. What are you? What do you think in uh, terms of your I, style? I, 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 you know, Sean, I don't think I have one particular style. Um, mm. I think if you if you go down through my grid on Instagram, it's pretty diverse. And in terms of landscape, it's diverse. I mean, I, I don't particularly do a lot of seascape or astro, um, but I, I'll try and always mix it up between, you know, shooting something quite moody or looking for that nice vibrant sunset or sunrise. I, I, I like, I suppose... I like images that are that, that have got impact you know uh, like if i'm gonna shoot a moody scene then i really want the processing afterwards to reflect that you know i want to have nice dark skies you know lots of dodging and burning um and again if it's a sunrise or sunset where there's, there's a lot of color then i really want to just you know amplify that without you know going into the whole saturation thing like you know like i mean the, 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 the old me would have been 100 on the saturation <laughs> 100 on the vibrance uh, I'm like you know, like I mean, uh, we're we're dieting back, you know, just to make things look yeah. a little bit more nat natural. Desaturating almost. Yeah. Desaturating, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just you know, I was just weird. I was watching uh, like a Michael Shane Bloom tutorial last night. He was doing a live edit, like, and he was 
mean, he was actually desaturating. He was focusing more on the vibrance. He was just kind of using yeah. that. Um, but yeah, definitely desaturating is something that I would do a lot more nowadays. Um, but I suppose from, from shooting with guys like Rodney O'Callaghan, who would be a, a good friend of mine and a mentor, um, I found that like I'm always trying to create mood, whether that be uh, you know, a dark moody image to reflecting whether it's raining or whatever, or if it's a, a, a decent sunrise or sunset, again, creating that, that, that mood, that impact that you get when you're there, you know, I want to just try and make people, you know, see what I see when I'm at these scenes, you know? Um, so so yeah. I don't, I don't think, I don't think I have a particular style. I just try to, I try to replicate the scene, I suppose, as best as I can digitally, like when I'm, when I'm post-processing afterwards, um, just to try and make people feel that that they're there, that they, they were witnessing what I witnessed when I took the picture, you know. Um, I, so, if, so if I can take them on a journey, like, you know, if I, if I can impact people, like, like, let's say, for example, we'll say that, that shot I took back at Inch Beach um, that you guys, I think you spoke about it before, when I, the telephoto shot. Um, the yeah. two people on the beach, you know, like it, it was just all the negative space oh, above yeah. it. Yeah, 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 you know, stunning. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, like, I mean, it's not technically a good shot. I mean, I mean, like, like you can see this banding because it is quite blown out, but at the same time, it, it worked, you know. And, I'm, and I'm, I suppose I'm trying to do more of that now. Um, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to create images, I suppose, with a little bit more, you know, of that feeling where you're there, you know, that I, I, I want to try and. It's not as dopey like this. I, I, I want to try and move people. Like you know, I want them to kind of look and kind of go, "Fuck," you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I wonder yeah. what they were doing at the beach. You know, like I don't, I don't, I, you know, I suppose we're at a stage now where, you know, you want to try and get away from shooting the let's call it, you know, the, the, the postcard shot. You know, you want to try and, you know, not that you want to try and stand out or try and, but you want to try and better yourself and give people something different, you know, and, and you, I mean, and a good example, Sean, is your tree shot, the one that went viral during the week, you know, Oof. that, that was something different, you know, it was, I mean, mm. it's, it's a shot that if you were to scroll through Instagram, through all the guys and girls that you're probably following, you probably won't see another shot like that on Instagram, you know, Mm, um, thank you. Yeah, that's you know, so, you, you definitely stop. Thank you. And yeah, and, you stop. Yeah, it it, it, it is like it, it just it, like it, straight away when I saw it, I was like, oh damn. And and there's you know, I I there the like that that's where the bar is set. And it's like with you, Mike, as well. Like when Mike takes a shot, the bar keeps getting raised, and you mm. realize then that 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 just taking the generic photo, the postcard shot, yeah. while it's still nice, and there are people out there who would love to see it. Are you, you know, you have to ask yourself then, like, you know, are you, are you growing as a photographer? Are you, you know, are you, are you pushing yourself to, to create better images, um, you know, or, or more unique images? And it's hard because, like, obviously, we live in a country where it's small, and there are only so many things you can shoot. But I mean, you, you've shown Sean that by getting, you know, off your tod and going for a walk, you can. You know, yeah. you can you yeah. can produce an you can produce an image that that will affect people, and it did affect people because yeah, I mean, all you do is go through your stories during the weekend. I, everybody I've, was sharing it, you know. I'd say I've seen that photograph about seven million times. I mean, no, but I mean, I mean, we, we, I mean, we can talk about that, but we can we can go to you, Kev, as well. I mean, I mean, can we, can we just say as well, Kev, you look awesome, man. I mean, the red shirt, the red headphones. <laughs> he looks great. He always does. He looks, thanks, man. Yeah, he, 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 he turns <laughs> up on the night like he does. He does. Yeah. Like, Kev, Kev, Kev's like, Kev's like. I need to look good tonight. He's like, he's the like, lads, yeah. like, he's like, coming on. <laughs> he's like, he's like, the hair is nice. He's like, I got a nice shirt, red headphones. He's color coordinated. He looks dapper now. I gotta give it. Thank you. He shaved. Uh, you know? no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> My little one was wearing a, a yeah a Minnie Mouse dress today, so she's telling me to put this on. Oh, yeah. So you're like, you, did, you just took like your Minnie Mouse pre and then put on the headphones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. But it is. But I mean, I mean, we, like, I mean, we can talk about Kevin's tennis court image. But that, yeah. That, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, I mean. That 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 for me, like I mean, I like I that in my top ten like images yeah, from, when came out last year, you know. And and, and 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 like and it's something I'm going to try and do again this year, you know. And I'll be honest, I've got one of Mike's already in my top ten this year. Mm. And it was one he shot back in Glencar. It was one of the very first pictures he put he posted this year. And mm. nobody knows where this place is. He knows where it is, um, <laughs> and he's going to tell me afterwards. But yeah, but but don't but, say but, it. But, Mike, no, don't 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 say it. No, no. It's more the secrecy. <laughs> but it is. But I mean, but but like I mean, if we go back to Kevin, like I mean, that tennis court image, you know, like like I mean, you're a good photographer, Kevin. But that image really like brought you to the forefront, like of people going, "Holy shit!" Yeah, that's a serious that's a serious image. 
you know like and, and like yeah. i mean you could see because like, I, I was looking through your stories after it was like everybody was like holy crap, holy crap. Uh, like, I, I was, this is amazing i, I was almost embarrassed at, at a point like it was yeah, just you do embarrassed after a while like, yeah it's like holy you know God. yeah it's, but, but it's so but unique it, though it was so unique but that's it's just it. as well yeah. Yeah. it's fantastic yeah Absolutely. and i think that, that, that that's that, that's where you know you if you want to stand out you're going to have to shoot something unique mm. you know and you can yeah. only do that by exploring or like kev going up into the sky and looking for it, you know, mm. uh, and not losing your drone if you can in the process. Haven't lost uh, in a while. Can, so. can we speak about that? There? Can, we, can we touch on that there for a second, Mark, if it isn't such a sensitive subject? <laughs> oh, wait, go on. <laughs> <laughs> See, as you brought it up, like, you know, because oh, I've, yeah, yeah. I've never crashed a drone, just saying. Well, but... Sean, the <laughs> <laughs> Mark Strawn is Mark Strawn is currently resting in the, in the southwest of Ireland uh, off the coast of Cork. So off the coast of sheep, is it sheep's uh, head specifically? Sheep's, sheep's head, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, too, soon, was, too soon, Sean. Too soon. <laughs> so I had to get that in there. Come <laughs> uh, the Mavic, the Mavic Three is coming out in like ten months. You'll be fine. You'll get it. Dude. Yeah. Oh I'm like, God. Just take, just take my kidney. Here you go. Can you, can you, can you yeah. talk about the feeling, Mark, when you, when you felt like it, can, can, yeah, it was gone? I, okay, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be straight. Up. Like I went out that week. I think it was actually the weekend that the, um, that COVID would kind of like when the country realised we were going to go into lockdown. It was, I think it was pretty close that weekend. Mm. And I remember I was out flying it, and it wasn't a particularly nice morning, you know. But I knew that if I wanted to get a, an unusual image, I was going to have to like get close enough to the cliff to just get this nice angle on it. And um, I had it in sports mode, and I think that disables your your proximity sensors. So I was oh like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this that. looks good. I was like, oh yeah, this looks good. <laughs> this looks this looks good. Wait a second, why am I looking at this? And then <laughs> and then everything went black, and I was like, oh no. I was like, I'm after crashing to the side of the cliff. And to be honest, I didn't get upset. You know, I really didn't because I was like, I, I the realization that the whole world was going into lockdown. I was like, I was like, man, it's, it's a piece of machinery. You know, there are people dying all over the world right now. Uh, you can't get like, a, you know, it was a secondhand drone. It was no point getting upset. There really wasn't, yeah, you know, yeah. um, you know, there, like it, it would have been different now. Like if let's say my camera had been resting on the tripod and it had gone over the edge. Yeah. I probably, I would have been upset then, you know, but Yep. you know it's 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 a piece of machinery it can be replaced you know yeah, yeah. did your heart did your heart sink like i mean yeah I, for, for for a second <laughs> like, literally for, for yeah. that split second i was like you know um i was like it's just it's just messing with me it's just messing with me it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna pop over the edge i was like <laughs> <laughs> i was like no no it's gone but it, you know it is it is what it is you know it, you know there's, there's no point getting upset over it when you're talking about sports mode there it just reminded me you you don't know any pain until you've tried to show off at a 10 year old's <laughs> birthday party with a drone, <laughs> trying to get a photograph uh, which i did with about i don't know there's about a dozen kids out the back and we were just trying to kind of get them together for for a shot so i said right okay i'll put the drone up and i had just re- i had uh, decided that i was kind of relatively proficient at this stage and i put it into sports mode a few days beforehand so i was flying it around and they were all looking oh my god this is great this is fantastic and i thought i was maverick from top one <laughs> flying this thing around and uh next thing i knew it was just like right into the trees in the back of a uh, back of the back of the house oh, no. and it was i was like oh, where's it going and i could see it in the in the in the trees and now all the kids that i've been trying to get their attention suddenly i have their full undivided <laughs> <laughs> as they're watching as they're watching this 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 drone about 15 20 feet up in the air whatever stuck in all these branches and uh, just again, like Top Gun, my ego was writing checks my body couldn't cash because I, <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll get it out. I'll get it out. It'll be fine. And yeah. then just hit the branch. <laughs> down it went. Mm. Uh, oh. but, uh, it, it, was, it survived. It survived. But uh, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Oh, was, drones. Drones can humble you. We've, we've all sure. had a few of that. <laughs> they can, they can <laughs> humble you. A sports mode is dodgy. Like I use. I always use sports mode when I'm in flying it in high wind. I know yeah, and you want to get wind, it back. That's you want to get it back. I That's why I use sports mode. Like, That's a good what idea. I didn't realize about sports mode as well is like, you know when you're landing a drone and it gets to a certain level and it'll stop and then it'll yeah. land itself. That doesn't work in sports mode. Oh, so really? when you, yeah, when like, and this was with the Mavic 2. I only had it a day, right? And I brought it out and I was flying it in a thunderstorm, of course, like as I do, because it was rainbows Obviously. and everything over the Ballyhower Mountains. And I was just getting it back and I just, I, I held down the bottom perpetual controller just to get it down. Like, 
it just never stopped it just went smacked off the ground and i had the camera facing down so the it just smacked off it and i was just looking at this all i saw was hasselblad i was like oh god please please be okay <laughs> and i actually have a small chip taken out of the edge of the casing oh, the, the camera's fine but the casing took the brunt and i was like Oof. lads like the problem is because they're so expensive like and like you could literally crash them or lose them in the split second do you know what i mean yeah, like whereas yeah, with well, a camera you kind of you know you'd want to be going fairly doing something fairly irresponsible if you wanted to lose your camera or it you know, yeah. so yeah I, I've, I've lost my drone like definitely twice possibly three times <laughs> one time it was just like it was a lunch time i was bored as a girl i'm gonna just you know go up the road fly it a bit um and yeah, it was just, it got really windy all of a sudden. And obviously I only have the, the mini, so like it weighs absolutely nothing. So I was up there and I was like, right, come home. And it just went the other way. And I was like, oh God, it's got the the GPS thing or whatever. Return to home. Like, yeah. And return to home yeah. didn't, wouldn't work. Like it just, it, like, couldn't. <laughs> there, there, it wasn't strong enough. <laughs> um, it, doesn't so, work in, it doesn't work in, in Wicklow. No. So... so <laughs> So I followed it, I went around to like the next next kind of housing estate up from where I was. Like it was up near a big field, but there was a housing estate. So I went around, um, no sign of it. I looked in gardens, you know, tried to follow the, the GPS. So I continued down the road, go back around, uh, and then there's a lady just standing there with it in her hand. She's no like, way. Yeah, she's like, Are you looking for this? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that didn't hit you, did it? She's like, No, no, I was like, it was just in my garden. I was like, that didn't hit you. <laughs> Imagine uh, into the window of her car. Yeah, imagine. Oh, she was like tennis court. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was a, she was on gate match point. How to serve? Medals, please. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. While we're talking about gear, lads, you know, because we are photographers and we love gear. And Mike, Mike, I'm gonna call you out, okay. now, Michael. Yeah, yeah. 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 Him, Michael, you him. are the biggest gearhead that I know oh, <laughs> as a yeah. photographer. Like. If I've ever had like the most in-depth conversations I've had with you have been about gear, like when I've been out about switching to Sony or whatever Fuji <laughs> or so, Mike, talk to us about gear. Um, I'm gonna say, okay, we're not, we'll just put out there. Gear isn't the essential thing as you're a photographer, obviously. Do you know what I mean? Like it, skill and composition, and everything is the essential thing. But you love your gear, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know I, how else to put this uh, but you do yeah I, I suppose whatever I probably change gear more times than Marcus change rab jackets so uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a lot I've seen his wardrobe that's a lot <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it's it's an affliction it really is um, <laughs> I just I, I uh, I'm just I'm just really interested in, in, in the technology and yeah yeah. Uh, I just I just like that side of it as well. Uh I'm just yeah, I just uh I I you know I, whatever it is, uh Sony Alpha rumors and Nikon rumors or all these the, these uh mm. the, the, these pages. I just I, I I love reading about them. I love watching say the uh DP review TV or the camera store TV uh on on, on YouTube and just kind of getting that information. I I may never buy the the gear, but I just like to know about it. It's yeah, you know, because there's um there's just so much so many amazing little bits of technology that are out there i mean um i know sean you use the the, the olympus yeah uh, but i mean olympus had so many fantastic features that yeah. you know a lot of other a lot of other companies didn't actually put in put in place and i would often think uh, you know if, if 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 fuji and olympus could could combine to, yeah you know and just what what they would have or you know um so I just I I uh, yeah I just kind of nerd out on it. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask you a question there, Mike? Just very it just popped into my head. Um, do you think that because one incredible feature and something that I really miss about the Olympus system I do is is the stabilization. So I do miss the like the it's not the same in the in the Nikon. It's not the same in the Z6. Mm. You know, is is that something to do with the sensor? Like, like is it possible to have that level of stabilization? Like I was able to shoot. Um, I don't know, Mark, do you remember, I was with you in Dingle, and it was a very kind of stormy, windy day, and I took a shot at the, the fence posts looking back yeah, towards yeah. Cuminol and the beautiful light. That was like a half a second shutter speed, like, and it, no bother, handheld, tack sharp, like, and that was on the Olympus system. Yeah. Mike, is, is it something to do with the sensor size? Is it because it was a micro four-third sensor that they were able to get that level of stabilization in the yeah. camera? 
I, I think I think there is there is that uh, th- that is a, a big element to it. Obviously, they, yeah. they, they, the the engineers they they do amazing things. Uh, besides that, but certainly it's um, it it is a factor to it as as well. Because yeah. again, I suppose if we were to take our our mobile our mobile phones and we were to try and take a shot, you know, we can because the sensor is quite small. You know, we we can very often kind of hold it in maybe blustery conditions, and we can still get a fairly decent um, mm. uh, uh, sharp, sharp uh, image. So certainly, it's it, it, um, it, it's it's something that will um, that that helps a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I think I read somewhere that uh, Olympus had got it to a stage with their their image stabilization that they couldn't actually go any further because the rotation no. of the Earth. Would actually start <laughs> impacting it. You know, it was, it was that. It was that. It, it was. It was that. Yeah. It was that good. Yeah. Yeah, like I like the I had the three hundred millimeter f four, so that's like a six hundred millimeter full frame lens, and I never had to carry a tripod. Like that's shooting insane. handheld, no problem. Like um, now it's funny enough because like a lot of camera manufacturers do share sensors and they share parts like i mean i know sony and nikon have like sony gives their sensors to nikon now uh, it's the skeptical side of me is kind of thinking i'm not sure sony are giving their best sensors now to to competition companies you know what i mean but it's kind of it's interesting like it's an interesting market um and of course gas is always a thing where we'll read like i'm like you i love reading about the latest yeah. tech like i'm like geez god that'd be unbelievable to have like you know but i suppose mike just in terms of what you're shooting at the moment i know correct me if i'm wrong you you have a combination of sony and fuji is that right yeah that's it yeah that's it okay uh, so have you any preference or if I'm taking uh, shots of of the kids, um, or uh, you know, if somebody asks me, you know, would I would I would I take a couple of shots of of you know the, 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 their family or something like that? Uh, I, I I tend to kind of uh, uh, look at the, the the Fuji because I think they they just take lovely lovely portrait uh, portrait uh, images. They're just something with the with the color. Uh, and the, and the rendering um, and yes. some of their lenses they've uh, there's a, a beautiful 35 millimeter f1.4 that Fuji make it's not the sharpest uh, but it just has a, a just a lovely quality about it yeah. um, and then if I'm if I'm out and about uh, kind of landscape or kind of general shooting it's typically the Sony um, yeah um, I just a7 seven, a7 three is it that's it yeah yeah that's okay. it um, and it's it just has a it's got a great um, Again, it's great stabilization uh, in, in body. Um, the the, the colours are, are are lovely. I think they're they're they're, they're nicely suited for, for landscapes, uh, certainly. Um, the uh, the autofocus system is 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 excellent. Um, mm. Yeah, it's just they're 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 they're, they're well built, and the the quality of the glass that Sony are producing at the moment is is absolutely yeah. stellar. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I I, I enjoy I, I enjoy kind of using both and I, again it's it's um it's just something that i i, I just like learning about the, the new cameras and, and kind of their, their strengths and their weaknesses I, as i say uh, all joking aside i mean i suppose i would have changed away from nikon um a number of years ago um just simply because physically i was just finding it very very difficult to carry the big, yeah. the big dslrs um and uh i suppose at the time i I had I had what I wanted in terms of the Fuji gear, uh, nice and light and um, perfect for, as I say, portraits and and, and that type of thing. Uh, but for the landscapes, I just wanted uh, I, I wanted uh, I wanted something a little different. And uh, the Sony A7 III came out at the right time, where mm. did a deal and 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 did a trade and uh, mm. got 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 what I needed. Yeah, you can't beat that full. To be fair, like. I mean, I was always a big advocate, and I still am. Like Micro Four Thirds, like Olympus make a fantastic sensor, fantastic colors out of it. Like, mm. Olympus colors are so nice; they're beautiful to shoot landscapes with. You just can't argue with that high ISO performance, so full frame. Like, I mean, you know, it's just it really is nice. It really is nice. But again, there's pros and cons. Like, if I don't think if I didn't shoot Micro Four Thirds, I would I probably wouldn't have learned how to exposure blend. Yeah. Because it was that lack of dynamic range that forced me into learning how to blend exposures. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if I went possibly to full frame, Joe, you because you have such a high dynamic range, it, you kind of have that luxury of bit pull back highlights or raise shadows without increasing noise. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So That's gear is funny in that way. Do you know it'll kind of it, it it can it can give you or take away a certain skill skill sets like depending on what you're shooting with. 
very true, and I think that's that that's one of the things as well where you know gear doesn't have isn't isn't the be all and end all. It's it's mm. nice to talk about. It's nice to geek out about it, but you know, uh, as you say, you were using a micro four thirds system, uh, so you learned how to exposure blend. So that for you was was a a way to get to get the same type type of type of image, same type of dynamic range. Yeah. Um, and and that overall ultimately makes you a better photographer because you mm. learn new skills. You have a you have more more. Um, more more arrows uh more arrows in in your bow or whatever uh yeah to to, to um to, to get the final shot yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent makes a lot Marco, of sense what do you have in your camera bag on- okay <coughs> funny you should ask what's, in, what's got- in your camera bag Mark? <laughs> <laughs> welcome to another uh, edition of what's in your camera bag uh, <laughs> well kev well, i happen to use the world's most popular brand <laughs> Canon. How, how, how do i the get them off? Yeah, how do we, how do we, <laughs> I'll just cancel this, this whole segment. <laughs> You're just like, be just, every time I say can, I just keep it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely um, should do that, by the way, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I shoot with a, with a, with a Canon EOS R. That's my, 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 my primary body. And I have a Canon 6D Mark One as my backup Um but to be honest, I rarely use it these days. I find that I'm just kind of primarily using the ESR. Um, I probably will change to 6D for something else down the line just to have, I, I may buy another EOS, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping that Canon will bring out something kind of in between the, the, the R5 and the ESR, you know, that, uh, that I can maybe upgrade to that and make the ESR my kind of my, my, my yeah, second yeah. camera, you know. Yeah, um, nice. but, but to be honest, I'm kind of, um, the, the one body is kind of servicing what I need. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've got I have a couple of different lenses, um, as, as you probably know, Sean. Like, I mean, I, I'm I'm prim- primarily at twenty four to seventy. Uh, that would, would be my main lens. Yeah. Um, I obviously have I have the seven to two hundred two point eight, and I've got the Sigma one fifty to six hundred, um, which I love using. Love it. Like it's it, it, it's a weapon to use. Yeah, but like, big boy. But, big boy. But, <laughs> it, but it's so much fun to use. So much yeah. fun to use. It really yeah. is. You know, it's a it's a real. Um, it's uh, it's fun, you know. You can you can be out in the scene, particularly like if you've got uh, the second body and you can throw onto that, and you know, just just oh, man, it's just great to be able to just go to like you know six hundred mil and just look around and see what you can find, you know. Yeah. It, it's don't don't get me wrong, it's it's tough on the arms, you know. But um, <laughs> I imagine so, yeah. But uh, not 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 you, Sean, not with the gun show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a telephoto, so I'm, I I could be put back in my box really quick yeah. if, I got, <laughs> if I got one of them. But, uh, There's something yeah. very satisfying, though, Mark, isn't there, about picking out compositions with a telephoto lens? Yeah, you know I mean? and there's, 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 really there's satisfying. There, yeah, and, and it's tough, man. There's a skill to it. Like, I mean, there's yeah. there's, there, there's few people that do well. Like like Rodney O'Callaghan is a good man with a telephoto. Prime example. I mean, he, he's probably one of the best guys I've seen. Like you know. Um, yeah. And obviously the guys that shoot at the coast and stuff, you know, like, but like, like Rodney now stands out to me because, you know, he, he will often just go out with that and shoot, you know, yeah. and the stuff he gets with it is just phenomenal. And like, and to have the vision to be able to pick out those images, I mean, sometimes some, you know, like a kilometer away, like, you know, particularly depending where you're set up, you know, and yeah. like, I just think that takes real skill to yeah. be able to pick up, to be able to pick out shapes and textures and recognize light and you know, I mean, you still have to compose an image. It's not just you know, some people are just kind of well, happy to you know pick up the big gun and look around and kind of shoot anything. Yeah. But like to be to be able to create the stuff that he creates, you know, you, and he has the same lens as well. You know, mm. there's, there's a real, there's a real art to that. You know, like I, like even if you think of like a, a Fred um, a Raw Dublin that, that shot he took there with the freeway. Uh, oh, yeah. was, it, was it the M50, Kev? I'm not too sure. Where, yeah, where, it, was where the it, was. it was the M50. Oh, holy crap, man! I mean, like that. that I mean, he shoots with a Sony. What is it, 100, 400 or something? Yeah, yeah? I think so. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. I mean, it's, come on. He, but, I mean, he uses it very well, doesn't he? He's a he. Yeah. he that's, he's a guy now who understands how to use a telephoto lens, like you know, and like I mean, and he's obviously comfortable using it. Mm. Um, but but I mean, the still the rules of composition still apply. You know, you can't just, just yeah. you know you can't just point and shoot. There's yeah. real thought. Yeah, I, I think you have to put real thought into what you're going to shoot with a telephoto. You, you know, and he obviously spends a lot of time planning his images. Um, yeah. You know, so but um, yeah, I do like telephoto. It, it brings yeah. a whole new. Uh, I mean, our friend, our good friend Mark Fletcher, got a 100 to 400 recently, Can, and yeah. like 
Yeah, and like it's opened up a whole new world for him. You know, he's he's, he's out trying to catch squirrels at the moment, yeah. which is great. <laughs> yeah, but it is, yeah. man. But 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 it's it's invigorated him, and it's 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 challenging him. He's finding you know that there's difficulties in doing it, but you just know that give it another month or two, and he's going to come along with a banger. You yeah. know, like yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's and that's going to set the ball rolling for him. You know, and then yeah. all of a sudden the wide angle lens, which would have been the go to lens. It starts to get a little bit dusty. Doesn't come out of the bag as much, <laughs> you know. And and you know, and that's I, th- I think you know you kind of need to be floating a little bit in between that kind of twenty four to seventy to telephoto. Like I think that's really the sweet spot. I know like, you look at all these gear videos uh, from from YouTube guys are like that three lenses you need for landscape photography. Do you really? You probably don't. Like you get away, yeah. you know, with, with, with a twenty four to seventy and a seventy two hundred or a one hundred to four hundred. You'll probably be okay there, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think I think wide angle lens is just, oh man, like if, if somebody was to message me now tomorrow and say, oh, yeah, I really like your stuff. What should I get? I'd be like, don't don't get a wide angle lens. Don't. It's yeah. just gonna. It's the last thing you need, you know. I'd mm-hmm. be telling him straight away, go for a twenty four to seventy. Start there. You've got enough there to play around with and and get good at using that lens. And then you can start going up, you know, from 70 to 200. Or if you find that, you know, you're not getting wide enough, then obviously go down. But get good at using one lens at the start. And I, I wouldn't recommend going wide. I really wouldn't. Mm. You know, like, I mean, no, I, I had to learn the hard way because I, I, like Mike gave me really bad advice. He said, get the to to 60 round to keep it. That was definitely sabotage. 100% sabotage. <laughs> <That was, laughs> <laughs> was, Mike was there stroking his 24 to 70 as he told you that. Precious. But it was, but it wasn't seriously. Oh my god! Like if I could go back, I, first I'd bitch slap Mike, but I would go back. Like, <laughs> but I would no, I would man. If I to, if I to start all over again, I was, I, I would definitely not go white. I, 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 yeah. I, and it's weird because you, you look at guys on Instagram who maybe have like have shown real progression and the majority of them are not shooting wide anymore. No. You know, it's it's telephoto or it's there's a little bit more compression, you know. Yeah. Um, it's rare you see now maybe look, maybe that's just a reflection of Instagram because everybody tries to shoot four or five and get you know fill up the grid. You know, maybe we've kind of gone on uh, I know we're going off, off tangent here, but uh, and you see yeah. yeah, but I think I think I mean you can attest to this, Sean. I mean, like like you know, obviously when you go and you shoot for the scene, but more often than not, like then you're you're processing to get that full. You want you want people to show to see it like at its full, you know. Yeah. So like like I find Absolutely. when I'm when, when I'm shooting, you know, I'm nearly always oh, shooting portraits. You know, I'm rarely going wide because let's be yeah. honest, it's like sixteen nine doesn't cut the mustard on, on Instagram. It doesn't, you know. Yeah. Like if you want if you if you want to stand out from the crowd, if you want that full four or five, you know, and I'm look. There's pros and cons. Obviously, like it's it, it stunts you a little bit because you're you're shooting for the, the you know the posting as opposed to shooting for the scene, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. I suppose you know that that that's one of the downsides. Instagram is that you know it's the place where we all want to show off our, our shots. Yeah. But you're 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 getting rid of you know so much of the scene. You have to ask yourself then, you know, yeah. uh, you know. Yeah, I do think the mark. Yeah, I do. I do think. A vertical four or five is still a like aside from Instagram, it's quite a pleasing crop to look at in general. It is, it, yeah, it for sure. It, to, is. it tends to frame compositions quite nicely, do you know. Mm. Um, particularly even shooting vertically in general, because I think for anyone who likes to incru- include a nice bit of foreground interest, it's nice to shoot vertically, do you know, because mm. especially if you're close to that foreground and you have that foreground there, and then you can yeah. still get that sky in. Whereas a lot of time, if you're shooting horizontal you miss the sky you know yeah I mean? for sure it's, it's a very hard balance to strike but um coming back to the wide angle yeah like i mean god i'd say i've used my wide angle lens maybe four or five times since i got it yeah. back in the summer to you know my 14 yeah. 30 and i do enjoy shooting with it but a wide angle is hard like a wide angle mm. is hard to nail yeah. because yeah. compositions compositions tend to get lost in a wide angle lens do you know yeah, what i mean yeah. like yeah, it's yeah. A, when you go that wide, sorry, Mike, go on. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, no, I was saying it's it's a it's a skill set in, in, in itself. A little it like is. what Mark was saying with the uh, with the telephoto. It's um, the 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 wide angle. You you have to. It it will only suit a certain scene. Uh, yes. You have to have you have to have something very strong in your foreground, and and, and your middle ground. There's uh, that you have to kind of I suppose to some extent. Uh, almost ignore us uh, especially if you know something like uh, kind of water or a lake or something like that if if it's if it's very monotonous 
it's just going to make it absolutely huge. So you, you have to hide yeah. it, you have to shield it. So it almost has to be some sort of like something large in the foreground connecting to your to your background. Mm. Uh, that, that, that middle ground uh, has to be minimized in some way. Uh, so yeah. it's... It, 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 it is its own it, it is its own type of skill uh, in the same way like picking things out with it with a telephoto wire as well so I, I like the idea of what you said mark in terms of you know you know use one use one lens at a time get get used to it uh, because you can go up or you can go down from that um, but I suppose there is the uh, there is the danger you know when that we say okay I need to get I need to get the Trinity I need to get everything mm, yeah and, yeah and and uh, from that then you you actually arrive at a scene and you don't know what lens you should use no. uh, and and uh, th that can just lead to a lot of confusion so yeah it's um it, it's one of the skills is is knowing the right lens to use uh in, yeah. in, in the right time definitely and you know what the worst thing is and i don't know you can probably all test this is when you're packing your bag the night before and you're weighing up where you have to go and you're kind of like do i need this but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, God, what if now if I'm out in the, sh in the shoot and the lenses I need is at home? Do you know what I mean? You're trying mm. to weigh up what will I bring, what won't I bring? And you end up bringing the whole thing. And you always only <laughs> shoot with one lens. Do you know what I mean? You'll bring your wide angle, you'll bring your mid, you'll bring your telephoto. God almighty, you might even bring three tripods. You wouldn't know, like, do you know what I mean? Just in case, like, you know? And, like, it's your, exactly what you said, Mike. There's a skill set in itself in knowing. And I think that comes down to just constantly shooting and shooting experience you know what scenes shoot what focal length and you know yeah. where you're going to shoot it's, and i suppose that helps if you know exactly where you're going to shoot you'll know what focal length you need i have a particular fan list for 24 millimeters for landscapes because i only had one lens for a long time and that was a 12 to 40 and that was on the olympus system so that's a 24 to 80 full frame equivalent and so 24 millimeters was the widest i ever had so I got really used to shooting at 24 mil and I knew its limitations, but I also knew its its benefits. And for me, it's that it's a perfect balance between it's wide enough to get the whole scene in, but it has enough compression that mountains in the background aren't lost yeah. or scenes that you spoke about there in your mid ground. It's not lost in the scene. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like 24 millimeters, the, the, all the thirds from the front to the middle to the back are all connected. Whereas I think with that wide angle, a lot of the time, unless you have that prominent foreground, such as that road in County Kerry, uh, John with the big U Bend road um, that we shot recently, Mark, you shot it as well. Yeah, down by like, Sheep Pass. Yeah, that one. If, mm. When you're shooting that with a wide angle, that's prominent. Like that's whoa, like it's right in your yeah. face. Like do you know what I mean? Wide angle, like that's nice. But if you don't have that in a wide angle, it's just it's just another scene. Do you know what I mean? So like. Like you could you could do a whole other podcast on the skill set in choosing a lens and choosing a focal length for a different a different composition. You know what I mean? It's 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 a minefield. Like and it is like photography goes so much deeper than just pressing a button on a camera, doesn't it? Do you know episode mean? fifty. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How we have I a mean... treat plan for episode fifty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but it is like, and I think. For someone starting out who's reading DP Review, which I do, or I read Tech Radar and Digital Camera World, those are the three main ones I read, like about if I want to buy a new lens and look up reviews, you know, like it's it's a minefield, like isn't it? But just, it I, I just text what? Mike. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Generally, yeah, I I played Mike there. I, I, I thought you said you just texted me. I was checking my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I, I played Mike there. Uh, was it this time last year? About eighteen months ago, because I was I I was on, I was switching to Fuji and I was joining different things. Like, and I was me and Mike in in depth chats about gear. Like, so yeah, it's it, it's a minefield. Do you know what I mean? I suppose it's just about choosing what gear suits you, but it's not always about the gear either. Do you know? That's right. Yeah. And, you know, if you can go on all of these forums as well. And it can, yeah. be, so, it can be so annoying because you'll Sony or Fuji or whoever releases their latest lens and you'll get half of them uh, giving out to say that, oh, it's it's too clinical. It's too perfect. It's too sharp. It has no character. Uh, and then, yeah. then, 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 then something like uh, you know, a company like you know the Seven Artisans, you know from from China that are you know re releasing some 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 lenses now, and you everyone going, oh, it's too soft, it's too this, it's too that, there's too much chromatic aberration. I think, was that the character that you were giving out about on the on, 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 on the Fuji or on the Sony? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you just you you can never win. Um, no. So it's it's it it is it is an absolute minefield. So I think you 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 have to kind of box clever. You have to um, you have to do your research and you have to 
yeah, uh, just um, you know, go into the camera shops. You know, we're, we're get a feel for them. Yeah, get a feel for them. We're very lucky in Ireland. You know that we, you know, between Cork, Limerick, and Dublin, and, and Galway, there are some very, very good um, yep. camera shops uh, that will will let you do that and will actually give you really good, honest advice uh, yeah. and and let you try it out and uh, see if it's if it suits suits your need. Yeah, yeah. The feel of a camera is often been very like important. Like I like a camera with a deep grip that you can just draw have in your hand and just something that's not small and fiddly and soft, you know what I mean? And yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um I what I love about those forums and it just gets me every time is the sharpness test where they're photographing a brick wall. And it's yeah. just like a brick wall, <laughs> like you're just like I'm sorry, like but like yeah. This is no relevance. Like, if you're going to be this picky about gear, like you know, and there's lads who are that picky about sharpness, and like, yeah. you know, you're not going to stand outside in the rain and try and photograph a scene in a landscape. Do you know what I mean? If you're worried about photographing a brick wall, like you know, and distortion, and ah, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Could be all down to the brick layer. Any of the problems? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So, lads, can I ask you about post processing? Because we we know Sean loves a bit of post processing, and he is. Oh, Mac O'Brien, hey, you're you're among you're among Marine. very apt post processors here. No, Mac I kind of feel Kevin like I'm like the this complete outsider somewhere. here. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> like three landscape photographers no. from the west of Ireland who are, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. Just like, be I'm just be like intimidated. The, I'm just a content <laughs> photographer stuck over here at the other side of the country. Uh, you know I mean? Um, but no, so like. Obviously, it's an integral part of your photography, both of you. Um, do you feel you need to be as proficient in post-processing as actual photography these days to to achieve what you want to achieve? Like, is it yeah. is it an integral part? Uh, Mike, do you want to take this? Um, sure. Uh, yeah, I, I think you, once you got some of the basics. Um, uh, within post-processing, you're probably going to be all right. You know, you, uh, you could look at, uh, at some guys online and uh, like uh, Pix Imperfect uh, or people like that. Just One mesh, things. what a man. Yeah, absolutely. He is, just, he is just fantastic. I love, I love watching him. He's just so happy and he's just oh, stop. so enthusiastic. He's, he's fantastic, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know if, if you know this, Mike, but I've only recently taken up Photoshop. Yeah, uh, yeah. What? Yeah, I, I'd never, <laughs> ever, ever used it. Yeah, um, true. So only recently. Only recently. So I'm kind of dipping my toes still. And I kind of could come and go. Um, but Unmesh has been like the boy. Uh, yeah, no, you know he's, I mean? he's he's really good. You know, if, if you whatever find you want to do, just type it in. There he is. He's there. There he is. Yeah, Hello, yeah. Good morning. <laughs> yes, Unmesh. But you know, he's um, you know, so, so th th there's guys like that, and they go into such de depth and detail. Um, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, um, the, the, the film simulations on a Fuji camera or an Olympus camera, they'll probably be more than adequate and more than enough for, for most people. Um, but I suppose, again, like going back to what I kind of talked about earlier on about kind of style, that I kind of found that I had to do a, a certain amount of post-processing to, to kind of get that, um, that look that I had seen out in the field and get that back into the, get that back in, into the scene. So um, that's that's probably why I I I, I dip my toe into it as well, and you know it's it is just things like dodging and burning uh, a little bit of kind of the art and effect, or you know a couple of other a couple of other things, maybe a little boost in clarity or texture, that that type yeah. of thing. Um, and I think it's it's probably going to become a little bit more important maybe as as time goes on, because what we're finding now with, with software developers and with apps is, you know, it's all of this AI processing, you know, that, you know, they're yep. advertising things as, you know, the one click in your, your, your Instagram ready, but that's all down to a software developer saying, okay, well, this, this is what's good. And this is what's popular on Instagram. So we're going to give you this, this look. Uh, so, you know, a lot of images can become samey. So I think, you know, even if you just have a little bit of experience with Photoshop, or Lightroom even, uh, which is which is excellent as well, uh, for, for for processing. Um, you know, it, you you can develop something that's more unique and that's more your own style as opposed to something that's that's more samey. Um, yep. And th that 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 is important. Um, I I'm I'm always um, I suppose one of the big guys that that I, that I admire um, is is Ansel Adams. Uh, you know, the guy was just an absolute master of. Of, well, of, of so many things just amazing with composition and uh even something like you know, where he developed his own system with um 
you know, exposing for the, the darkest darks and the brightest brights. Uh, but he was also incredible in the dark room. And, you know, that, you know, if he was alive today, he would be using Lightroom. He'd be using Photoshop. And he often said, um, what was, the, what was the, the, the phrase he said, is that the, uh, the negative is like the composer's score and the print is the performance. Nice. And it, it's, it's, that, it's that type of thing that, you know, if you want to get the best out of your image, you know, just put, put that little bit of work into it to, 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 to get it to the point where this is, this is, what, this is what I saw, this is, this is what I felt, this is what I, this is what I want to, 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 to show to everyone. Um, and I think just, just, just enough um, so that it's, uh, you can put your own stamp on it, I think is, 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 is good enough. Mm, yeah, yeah because i think, I think kind of like to jump on sean's catchphrase almost at this stage you know it is about finding finding the balance and striking the balance because yeah you know you you know you, you can't take a bad shot and make it better in post-processing like you, you know yeah. if, you, if, you, oh, take, yeah. if yeah. you take a really bad shot mm-hmm. uh you know you can't make it and, and then if you take a really good shot you can complement it that bit more in post-processing i think that's you know mm. it's, it's about finding the balance of it so and you learn you learn a certain set of techniques to complement different scenes. That's what I found. As you shoot different landscapes, you almost already know what you're gonna do in post processing yeah. to complement yeah. that scene. Do you know? And I think now I for me, I think and for any landscape photographer, post processing should be an integral part of your of your workflow. And it's not when when you say that or when you say like you should be proficient in light and Photoshop, people might take you up as saying, well, you're, you're trying to do everything in post-processing and nothing in the field, but it's not like that. It's like, there is, there, there, you have to strike a balance, as Kev said, and like, you draw to me, I I can't stop saying that, (laughs) (laughs) but you have to, like, you have to make them both mesh and blend and work with one another. Do you know what I mean? One can't work without the other. Yeah, not not, not in Harry Potter, you know what I mean? Yeah, not in digital photography, like, do you know what I mean? So you learn a certain set of techniques that are going to complement different scenes that you have. And, and that's, that, that's about becoming efficient as a photographer. Do I think I mean? Ron, Ronan has said it before. Remember when, when we discussed uh, Luminar and the sky replacements, mm. that, that kind of stuff? Ronan was kind of saying, like, it's all good to use these tools just as long as you kind of know how to do it, kind of without them, first of all. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know what like what what you're doing it for you know like mm. that you're not just going willy-nilly like Poof, i'll do that like bang lashing yes. on these effects for no like just because you you know for no reason for no logic no, no thought process behind it yeah um you know it's so, like, it's, yeah yeah it's like the remote learning like uh or sorry not remote learning geez there, there was a teacher me you know the rote learning i should say um the rote learning kind of thing we all done in school whereas you learn things off by heart and you have no idea why you're learning 100%. or what you're learning but you just know that on exam day you're gonna spew out this essay on the page and you pray to god that the topic comes up like do you know what i mean but you don't that know why exactly you're it. you don't know why you're doing it whereas if you understand the techniques and you understand why you're applying them and yeah. then you just become more proficient as a photographer, you know. Um, 100%. I think, yeah. Marco, f- post-processing, um, which is something that, again, we've had in-depth chats about whether you remember or not. Mm. I remember them, but, you know, maybe... Maybe, maybe, Sean, maybe. Sean, 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 <laughs> Sean records them. Sean, help, help me, Sean. <laughs> do you know, how, do your, I, how do I blend this? <laughs> yeah. Sean, not again, not another fella. You're another <laughs> fella. You're another fella that's that I I think of like you and Mark McGuire know taught too Mark well. Now you're, now you're now you're better than me at it. No, it's just like no. <laughs> that's not that's I, not how it's been to happen. I was like Kev, I to be honest, like I was like Kev, like when the first lockdown came around, um I just I had obviously had time in my hands for, for a lot of time, uh, which is very strange for me. And um I just decided to go head first into Photoshop. I was like, man, I was like, this is the perfect time to start learning, to start researching. And um, obviously, I, 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 I thank you as well for helping me out and Mike and, and, and other guys, you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely integral. Um, but I mean, again, I suppose, if, if, if we come back to Instagram as well, you know, you can, it definitely helps you stand out more if you have yeah. a, I mean, okay, let's, let's, let's take an example. I mean, uh, one of my favorite photographers on Instagram is a guy called Michael Sadowski. Uh, he's called Mind's Eye. I, 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 I've, I've posted a lot of his stuff. And this guy is, is a master of post-processing. I mean, you can, and you look at his stuff and you can, it's the difference between 
being a good photographer and being a world-class photographer. I mean, obviously he's got strong compositions and he's got a great understanding of, of light, but like you can just see that there's hours upon hours of post-processing on these images, but they're flawless, you know? But then again, you look at somebody like, say like Emer Collins, who mm. will shoot at the coast, will shoot the scene. She'll get like, I remember I did a workshop with Emer years ago and her big thing was, get it right in camera. You get it right in camera, you have very little to do afterwards. I mean, can you honestly say that Emer's a worse photographer than him? She's not. No. I mean, she, she probably one of the best, she, she's, she's our equivalent to Rachel Talbert when it comes to coastal photography. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. Exactly. I mean, you look, you look at her grid. She's, a, she's an absolute master of tone, you know, of light, you know, composition. She's like one of the strongest photographers in the country, you know. She does very little post-processing, you know. But yeah. she's, still a, she's still, I would consider, a world-class photographer, you know. You know, it, so I mean, it's a case of, I mean, it, you can know everything in Photoshop. And uh, I mean, you can be like Michael, who spends probably hours producing a picture and it'll, it'll go viral, you know, or Emer, who, who may only spend an hour. But I mean, yeah. it's still as pleasing an image to look at. I mean, I can I could scroll on. If I was only to scroll between his and Emer's, I would still go, wow, that's an amazing image. That's an amazing image. That's an amazing image. It still makes me feel like it's an amazing image. You know, just because one person processes more or less doesn't take away from the fact that they went out and they composed an image and they shot it you know, and, and they got it right in camera, you know. So I think really, like, if you want to be, you need to get, get it right on the scene. And if you go back to your video that you put up during the week, like, I mean, you spent time, you know, checking where you were going to stand, how high it was going to be, how low it was going to be. If you hadn't done that, you know, potentially you might have had the same impact. You could have been two foot too high with your tripod. Yeah. And that scene, that scene might not have had the same impact. Whereas you shot, like, straight through the tree, like, a, like, a, like an arrow. And that's what, like, I mean, anybody that picked up their phone that day, like their eye went whoop, into the tree, oh. straight, pa straight past it, down to the back of the forest, mm. you know? And mm. I mean, if you take the care and attention on scene to get it right in camera, you know, if you've got, like Mike said, if you've got the basic understandings of Lightroom, you can pretty much process a picture, you know, well enough that when it goes on Instagram or Facebook, that it's going to look nice. Once you've got, you know, once you've got an understanding of, you know uh, that you're not going to push too far you know you're, uh, and we're all guilty of that when we start off that we go too far with the contrast too far with the clarity too far with the saturation yeah saturation uh, is one for me now that i yeah do. I, I bring we, it down you know, minus 10 most of the yeah, time yeah, like, yeah you know and, and and you know you have to make these mistakes i mean and and, and a good exercise really is to leave up your old pictures you know don't don't be ashamed to show your old stuff because uh, you know, and I'm, like if you go back to my grid, like it's it's horrendous. My God, like it's it's in the salt of the ice. <laughs> you know, the but, but, but you know what? I like I, and, and nothing irks me more than when I see people who get to a level where they realize they're they, they've obviously gotten better, and then they're like, you know what? I'm going to clean up my grid, and they delete the past. Yeah. The, the only the only way you're going to learn is by looking back and how how let's be honest, how crap you are yeah. to where you've where you've come now like you know and i'm it, proud it, of my crapness yeah like dude <laughs> yeah embrace the embrace the crap dude, yeah <laughs> oh no, man embrace it absolutely like you know because i mean it just goes to show that like if, if you put in the time and you put in the effort um like a good example is our, is our friend keith max snapogram i mean you go back to his early stuff and you look at what he produced in current the last day yeah i mean holy crap yeah. holy crap there's a guy yeah. like that is that is put in the time put in the effort and you can see now like he's produced that's a world class image you produced the last day yeah. mm -hmm. you know and that's in the space of how long have we known keith 18 months maybe two years yeah i mean Incredible. like that pro that progression like but again i mean there's a guy who spent time you know uh, learning composition who spent time i spent endless hours we know this he spent endless hours on photoshop you know getting raw files off guys who were friends of him and just like you really? know spending hours behind closed doors get it right and they all came together for that image in Karen too, you know? And I mean, Class. but again, you know, I mean, he put in the time, he put in the effort, you know, you, you, you get back what you put in, in in photography. Like, you know, if you make the effort to get up in the morning, go to a scene, you shoot it. If you get the image, okay, that's one box tick. Yeah. But if you go back and you don't really have a fairly good understanding of Lightroom or Photoshop, you, you're either going to make a dog's dinner of it or you're gonna you're gonna take it. You're gonna elevate it and 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 
bring it into that, 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 that greatness, you know, where, where like what you did with your tree shot the last day, Sean, oh. you know, like it was already a good raw file, but like you spent time in Photoshop, you spent time in Lightroom, tweak it. And mm. it just went from being like a, a, a wow shot to like a, holy crap, yep. this is something special, like, you know, mm. but again, you've spent time mastering Photoshop and Lightroom, you know, and it shows. So, I mean, like, you know, but again, you, 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 you've spent the time becoming a good photographer, uh, as well, you know, so they go hand in hand, you know. I mean, I think more so now than ever, they definitely go hand in hand. You 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 need mm. to have a, a, a good mastery of your of your camera and what you're doing on location, but you equally need to be comfortable in front of your PC, you know, trying to process the image and in, in, in a way that's pleasing to obviously to you because you're the person that you want. To, that's you're doing it for you, number one, as opposed to doing it for everybody. You're, you're oh, however many thousand followers you have on Instagram. It has to be for you first, you know. Mm. Uh, and, and if you can't, you know, uh, create what's in your mind's eye, you know, if you haven't got the skills to do that, then uh, then it's just another raw file sitting on your computer. You know, it's not reaching full potential. And I mean, yeah. So you're like, you're, uh, and Kev, like, I mean, the whole thing with you with Photoshop, it may be scary now, but I, like in 18 months' time or a year's time, we'll be chatting and you'll be like, oh man, like I had like 10 layers open in this one piece of, <laughs> piece of cake. And it will be yeah. a piece of cake. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll wonder, what was I even worried about in the first place? Oh, like, it, I mean, so you'll, you'll, you know, it's it's just, it, it's now, easy. It's, yeah, even now it's like, because I was like, how do you even open it? You know, trying to open a photo, you know, like, yeah. like literally the whole thing was terrifying, like where to start. Yeah. yeah. You see, I suppose. Uh, like for some, maybe if there's people out there listening who don't use Photoshop, what I would say is, like, go into Photoshop with a task in mind, and it's actually you're like you know you'll fig- you'll figure it out then you'll, you'll kind of figure out what you need to do. So I was just yeah. like, I want to use Photoshop. Yeah, I'm like, curious, Kev. That's, uh, that's Kev ridiculous. Uh, just just for like, I mean, in, before you went to Photoshop, obviously you were like 100% Lightroom. Yes. In ter- what's your percentage now as a matter of interest? How much time are you spending oh, in Photoshop still, and, and in Lightroom? So it's still probably. Like I'd say 70, 30, 80, 40, uh, 80, 20, 80, 80, 80, 80, 40. Yeah. 80, 40. <laughs> quick, 80, 40. Quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the maths there, Kev. Uh, uh, quick yeah, maths. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'd say it's uh, uh, 70, 30, 80, 20, like, yeah, t- light, Lightroom with the Photoshop. Just yeah, because but, but, I'm so comfortable in Lightroom, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I, but but I, but I bet you you're doing you're doing the very basics in Lightroom. You're probably doing lens correction. You're probably straightening your horizon. Blah, blah, blah. very few maybe opening your shadows and that's it you're like you're like into photoshop yeah you know that's amazing that you're that, that to have to be that comfortable so quickly it just goes to show like that everybody mm. should be getting into photoshop straight off the bat you know 100%. i regret it you know? but i do mm. definitely regret not not getting in there straight away yeah. but I, I i think as well mark you touched on the touched on the right thing as well that um you have to start off with something that's that, that that's good and um once you can work with something that has that has potential, mm. you're, you're you're on a winner already. Once you once you don't go too far, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I, but I think we 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 all make those mistakes at the beginning. We all move all the sliders all the way to the right. Mm. Um, uh, we we we, uh, we 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 think we're getting there. We we, we got this. I, I can actually remember this this picture I took um, when we were in. Um, on holiday years and years ago in Paris of Notre Dame and it was just flat like there was nothing whatsoever uh, right with it at all but um, I had Photoshop Elements 2 and I thought I could make this into the, the best thing ever <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I actually still keep it on my hard drive. I still keep it. I look at it every so often because I say, "Oh my god!" Uh, and because it, it's, it's it's a little bit like that episode of Father Ted, you know, where they where they where they bang the car and they, they ding it. And you, <laughs> and they think, you know, I nearly had it there a few minutes ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolute abomination uh, but uh, you know but it's that's that's where i started uh, and <laughs> and it's you, you have to, you have to make those mistakes and you have to make everything look sickly with colors and whatever it, whatever it is <laughs> Uh, yeah. and, and and then you actually realize, yeah, no, I gotta I gotta cut myself on here. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta put my sliders down. There's there's there, there's no there's no point in uh, well, we can all give the warnings to people. I think that everyone has to kind of go through that process at least once to realize. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. They were telling us the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's put it that's, this way, that's if you the don't... best analogy I've ever heard of <laughs> <laughs> for post processing. <laughs> like if you don't cringe looking at photos from three years ago. 
then oh you know, stop like literally yeah, I look back and I'm just that. like oh my god like what oh, like how have I like I even think like how, how did people not tell me you know what I mean you're like <laughs> why didn't anyone say here Kev calm down a bit on the El Clare <laughs> like there's no need you know so like yeah, that comes, that comes down to some brutal honesty and yeah. feedback as well, which is very... Man, yeah, I'll be honest, like, like I got an absolute, let's be honest, like I got a kick in the ass from Rodney O'Callaghan years ago. Like he actually called me up one night, I have no problem saying this, like, and he was like, all right, lad. And I was like, hey, Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> he more was like, yeah, the saturation side, yeah. Could you stay away from that, please? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, I was like, what's wrong with it? You know? He was like, just do me a favor, stay away from the saturation yeah. cider. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, and like it was like it was tough, it was tough love, but it was tough exact. Love works though, yeah. It was it was the phone call that I needed. It actually I could see straight away the change then. I was like, oh man, I was like, holy crap. You know, like I was and that 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 was like that was a pivotal moment in 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 my f- progression i was like oh crap you know i'm definitely doing something wrong here like you know but you know it's hard to give people that uh, it is to give that, that advice because it means some people will take it with it you know with, with, with their good intentions that, that, that you're trying to give it others will, will, yes. will, will, will obviously take it differently you know so unfortunately that's the world we live in where some some people will will, will, will appreciate it others will will, will will take offense you know but i i think uh, you know me personally, I would have no problem in saying it to someone else. Like, and if they if they get offended, then you know, you kind of have to ask what kind of a character, uh, you know, are they in the first place? You know, but if it comes to a good place, you know, and and uh, you can you can obviously phrase it and work in such a way where you're you're not, you're not trying to you know rip somebody's heart out. Like, you know, you're yeah, just, you're not you're, just, you're, you're, you're not saying no. it for the sake of being bad. No, not at all. Like, you know, trying to help. And uh, yeah, and I, I think it, it took somebody like Rodney to give me a kick in the ass. Um, and I'm glad that he did that. I'll be honest, I really am, you know. Um, yeah. and, and, and I'll always like I'll always remember that moment. Uh, and I, I would hope that I could do that for somebody. I'd hope I could kick somebody else's ass down the line. I, I, have, Sean, <laughs> I, I have Sean and Rowland for that. So like I pretty much run most things past the lads and Rowland. dude, it's, it's you know yeah. Rowland, like dear God, like you talk about someone yeah. kicking you in the ass, he'd kick you in the face, like yeah, <laughs> like he's just like, Let's, yeah. like no, like. No, Kevin, yeah. no, like just don't do that. And then I'm like, right, nice one. Yeah, you know didn't know why he was blunt as a brick to the face. Yeah, like, yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't lie, like, you know, so I just tell him how but it is. But you have I to, I think like, that's so important to have. You have like, to learn. Have that, that's how you learn, like. Yeah, but I think it's nice to know. have that. Sean, Everything is in roses want... and, you know what I mean? What's the sunshine and rainbows like, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Kev? Where's Kev? Kev, you're, um, you are, do not have sound anymore <laughs> <laughs> we we cannot hear kevin this is George. <laughs> George, sometimes this happens it doesn't really surprise me I, do, I, 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 I look at it as, as, a, as a blessing Sean, to be <laughs> <laughs> i think you can still hear you though man <laughs> you can still hear us which is great <laughs> uh, can, can I, I was like, yeah can we, we can hear you though <laughs> Can we, I was like, I was like, can, can we just take a moment to appreciate the fact that Kevin hasn't gone for a pee yet? <laughs> yeah, he, he probably needs to go on. Oh, Kevin, I'm actually I'm, all right, lad, <laughs> he's, he's probably got like a couple of bottles underneath the desk, and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not missing this. I, I got a, I got a, a, a pipe. Just, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, gas. Lads, I have one final question for you, and um, it's a double, it's a double question. So it's it's a location question, right? And um, Mark, I'm gonna go to you first. Uh, you have to pick one location in Ireland first that you could only shoot, or if you could shoot for the rest of your days, which would it be, or where would it be? Uh, well, well, for me, just uh, within uh, Ireland, we'll, we'll move on to the world in a minute, but just with Ireland for the moment. Uh, yeah, Slayhead, Sean, obviously, like the Dingle Peninsula. Oh, wait, wait, is, is it okay to say the Dingle Peninsula? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it has to be Dingle, like, well, like hands on. I, I, yeah. I know I haven't I haven't explored Donegal enough, and I, I know there is epic photography to be had up there, mm. uh, simply because you got it two summers ago, like, you know, when you went up last there. Summer, yeah. no, last, summer. last summer, yeah. Was it last summer? Last summer, summer yeah. yeah. So, cool. I, like, I, like, I feel Donegal is is one of these places. It's like my uh, that I just need to go and explore more. And and 
you could ask me this question in a year's time and I might change my mind, but right now it has to be Dingle. I think Dingle offers the most bang for buck in Ireland, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so okay. for, for me, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. It has to be Dingle, you know? Okay. I don't know who you shot in Dingle, uh, Mark. I I frequent the area every now and then. <laughs> I I partake in the photography there, Mike. <laughs> I'd say he rounds that hill and does and and and, yeah, the, and Farmar was just like Christ, this fella again. Yeah, <laughs> who, who who else can say they've got a tattoo of Dingle on their hand? Yeah, on, the man has a tattoo sure. of Don Queen. You got a tattoo on my hand. So come on. All the sheep go, oh, here comes the Mazda again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Before we, so we, Michael, I suppose we'll get your Irish location, then we'll go back to Mark for his worldwide location. So Mark, you yeah. can be kind of browsing that over in your head, but Mike, um, uh, one location in Ireland, if you can. It's a tough yeah, question. Uh, it, it's a tough question, all right. Um, it's, I, like Mark as well, I, I, I love Slayhead, I love all, uh, all around Dingle. Um, the Killarney National Park as well would be would be a big thing for me. But mm. uh, kind of the area around Glencar, uh, I've I I just I, I love it. Um, yeah. It's I suppose if if you take in the 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 Magillacuddy Weeks themselves, um, places like Carra Lake, uh, Loch uh Blackstones, um, the rivers back along that way, all of that area, I just I I I really love it. Um, my dad was actually from there, and really. We we should have we should I should I should have actually grown up there because because of the oil crisis back in the back in the seventies which is even before the eighties Sean uh, go away or uh, that yeah. there was seventy there was the seventies yeah there did was the world 70s. even uh, exist back then <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it did I thought the world started in nineteen ninety four uh, Mike no, no, no it it's, it's attained perfection in nineteen ninety four but it was still going on hey. before. <laughs> Yurt. <laughs> <laughs> but um I like they, you, we'll keep you Mike. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, um I the my my mum and dad decided to rather than build in, in Glencarra that they uh they, they, they lived in, in, in Killarney instead. Okay. Um and I suppose uh over the last few years, I suppose since my dad passed away, I kind of wanted to kind of go and kind of re-explore a lot of those areas that he would have kind of grown up in and would have been familiar with. So it's nice to kind of get those connections and mm. I, I'm very much uh, like what Mark was saying earlier on, you know, kind of going exploring because I, I you know, I, I don't I don't have a lot of personal experience uh, down through the years with them, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm re-exploring them and I'm getting lost and I'm, I'm finding myself halfway down in Boraheen wondering what's down there. Um, but just the more I explore there, just the more the more I love it. And it's it's um, it's it's a little like, you know, well, I suppose it's it's it, it's uh, kind of like the, the South Kerry thing as well. Like it's uh, it's it's untouched. It's um, it's unspoiled. And uh, there's just there's a lovely rawness to it. Um, mm. And uh, it, it's just nice, nice to explore. And even even without uh, getting killer images, it's just a, a fantastic place to just 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 get lost in for a while and uh, and come back kind of feeling feeling good about feeling good about the world and feeling good about oneself. Incredible, yeah. I think that the Kerry landscape has that. It just has that magic, doesn't it? You just get lost in it, like, and you just yeah. you, you you forget time almost, like. Oh, yeah. I mean? yeah. You just you're like transported to another world. I'm always looking for landscapes like that where I just imagine myself, as I said earlier on, a hundred years ago, and I open my eyes and I'm like, this probably looked the exact same. Do you know what I mean? Because those landscapes are disappearing now. Like, you know, and I'm always looking for it. Same when I'm shooting Astro, I'm like, and I I find like a dark sky region. Or like, this is what our ancestors saw before there was light pollution, before there was big cities. Like they stared up at skies like this. And yeah. endless nights, like, do you know what I mean? So, so romantic, Sean. Uh, I, have way, <laughs> I have a way of words. You feel it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, but it's 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 coming from what Mike said there. Like, do you know what I mean? It's 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 incredible. Like, um, Marco, world location. I think there's no secret that my favorite place in the world is Scotland. Yeah, if I had to, uh, if I had to go somewhere tomorrow, it would be the Isle of Sky. Just get me on the plane. Drop me off, leave me there. I'd be happy. <laughs> See you later. See you later. Yeah, it has to be Sky. It has to be like, Sky I mean, is uh, Sky is, I think, I mean, we all, well, some of us, I mean, I don't know if you guys have watched photography online, but oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 
I mean, if you look at their top 10 locations in Sky, why would you want to go anywhere else? I mean, you could go to Iceland, but I, and you get the Aurora and all that, but I mean, if you look at what Sky is offered in such a small location, oh man, it's dingle yeah. on steroids. It really is dingle on steroids. <laughs> and it just, it's just, oh man, I'm just, I'm dying. I, you know, I, 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 I talk fondly about Scotland. I, I feel like it's a place where I left peace of my soul when I was there. You know, and I, I feel like I've, I've unfinished business with Scotland. You yeah. know, that, that I wasn't, I, I was an okay photographer when I was there. I feel like I just did not do justice at all. You know, and it, and it kills me to know that, you know, that I, I could have produced better images. You know, like I, we were there in a workshop and it, and, and it was a great workshop, you know, but I just feel like I want to go back now, you know, and, and, and spend more time there and, and, and not be under pressure to, to, to be somewhere. And uh, yeah, yeah. And like, especially if you're at a workshop, you're kind of back and forth, and you're following. Yeah, them. you're you're a little bit like yeah, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I, I can promise you. I mean, like Mike, I know Mike. You have. I don't. I don't think Mike has been there. Kev, you probably haven't been there. I I, I promise you, if when you go there, yeah, you you'll come back a different person. You really will. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, you you you'll want to move there. That's that's the nice. feeling I have. Like yeah. I was like when I, I was like when I retire, if, if if money was no object, I would be gone in a heartbeat to Scotland mm. yeah it is mm. just incredible and the, and the mm. people are good and you know this it's just man you know it's a special yeah. special place special place it really is sure, you know sure we had a trip planned or I mean it was it was yeah. just before we did lockdown was it just before we went to lockdown Mark yeah. was it these weekends we were planning on going yeah. so we'll definitely have to revisit that no, um, we'll go man yeah like it's it's it, 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 like if I was if, if you know if I was talking to somebody tomorrow they're like oh I really want to do a farm trip I would be like look Scotland's got to be top of your list yeah. you know I mean it, like I mean, it's, Iceland is great Norway stunning country as well uh, I've got a trip planned to New Zealand in a couple of years which I'm sure would be fantastic yeah. um, but like I think when a place like Dingle obviously holds a special place in my heart I, like, I, I, I've, it, it's almost quite spiritual there Scotland gives these exact same vibes on there. Like, there's something really spiritual about Scotland. Like, you know, there's like when you're standing on on, on the precipice looking out at the old man store for sunrise, oh man, it's just, Special. it's like, it's just, if you forget the cameras in front of you and you just look at it kind of going, wow, yeah. just wow. Like, I mean, your jaw is on the floor. Like, you know I mean, that's, when some, when a place like that can make your jaw hit the ground, you know, you know, it's special, you know. I, I, I sometimes think that only photography can make you have that connection with the landscape. Mm. Like, you know, like tourists, like, and they, like we all go to nice places and we see like, oh, that's, oh, it looks lovely. Like, do you know what I mean? But I think it's only when you're a photographer, especially a landscape photographer, that you like appreciate like how intricate different landscapes are and how magic mm. they are. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a huge, huge benefit of being a landscape photographer. We see, we see the world in a different light. Like even when we're driving, you ever notice that, like when you're driving, yeah, like absolutely. you're looking, like, and you just all see the, all the time. Yeah, like, for me, it's like trying to spot a tree that's on its own in the middle of a field. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw, I, I saw someone post a photo the other day, like some some girl just posted like a photo or a selfie or whatever, and in, in the background was a perfect lone tree, and I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, like literally, it's just like it's like wow, yeah, I mean, it's just like that. You you're do. just trade you see, you like your eyes just yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mike, mike worldwide location anywhere in the world you would like to shoot oh well actually i uh, just in terms of what mark was saying there as well uh sky would definitely be up there uh mm. I, I love photography online um it's it's a great show um and i it's definitely a place that 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 i would like like to go but to be different uh i <laughs> I, I suppose i was in, in the balance of of uh, um i've thought about yosemite national park uh, in, in the united oh, wow. states nice. um it just uh there's just again there, there, there's just a lot of different well-known places like um el capitan half dome uh, i suppose the the the, all, the, the, the massive uh, giant trees uh, glacier point all the different waterfalls all, all these type of things um but i'd like to do it um uh, i suppose at my own pace it's something that you know not on a workshop yeah. Yeah. uh not at the time i know is it um is it horsetail falls uh where mm. you know at a certain time in the year and the um 
the the sun catches it and looks like it's it's on fire I, yeah. you know, I, I it, and it's it's just like it becomes an instagram mecca so i'm not interested in that but i just i just love to be there maybe kind of around december january something like that kind of snow yeah. and just just take my time and you know just i suppose I, it's probably going to be would be difficult to find a, a unique composition, but just to be in a place like that. And again, uh, going back, this is a place that Ansel Adams would have uh, been very, very uh, 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 well connected with, and just, just, just kind of going through those same places and and just experiencing that. Uh, it, it just any of the photographs that I've seen from there, it's just it just looks absolutely incredible. Um, it's 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 a place I I I would dearly dearly love to uh, to, to visit for sure. Yeah, Yosemite is absolutely incredible. Um, it, it, it just, it seems like a different world almost. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It just, it does really look incredible, it's particularly for astrophotography. So, do you know what I mean? Really, and you were saying, Mike, you kind of wanted to get into more astrophotography yourself in yeah. the coming months. That's for sure. Yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, I, I kind of c- c- caught the bug a little bit more there with the uh, Comet Neowise uh, mm. last year. Uh, we, uh, we trekked up, um, Halfway up the reeks with the boys, with two of the boys, late at night to uh, to, uh, to 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 get a couple of shots of it, and yeah. uh, it was just an absolutely brilliant night, you know, just showing the boys the Milky Way, you know, they could they could just about make it out, seeing yeah. the, the comet itself, and uh, you know, seeing the space station flying past, all this just 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 brilliant would be absolutely lovely to to to, to do a bit more astrophotography, and yeah, definitely that's a place that astro would be incredible, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of it's a tough question. Like, um, it's a tough question. Like, where would you? Do you know what I mean? Um, worldwide, yeah. I suppose. For me, world, I've, I, I, something fascinates me about Nepal, just the Himalayan region. It just and like mm. I, I'd have no interest in like doing Everest or anything, like John, nothing like that. Like, it yeah, just right. like. Even Mr. Not. On top of a mountain, <laughs> even Everest. Ever- <laughs> <Just stop. laughs> I do. There's, there's. Wait, I want to go to the pub, but I don't want to go up that mountain. Trying <laughs> to do it one morning, and leave like we're back in it. Just kind I'm so, I'm like, I'm socially awkward. Like, so the queues at Everest wouldn't appeal to me. Like, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the base camp would do, but like just the Himalayan region in general. Like, oh, I just think it's, it just seems fascinating. Yeah, like, I actually, I'd love to go there to photograph the the people. The Himalayan yeah. people, like I think they'd be mm. fascinating to photograph. We had, I mean, I mean, uh, the Limerick Camera Club, and we had Jerry Andrews on as a guest speaker, and um, he produ- he's just fantastic. He's a very well travelled photographer. He's from Limerick, but he shot in Southeast Asia, Nepal, uh, Italy, all the and street portrait primarily, and like he's photographed these. It's so interesting photographing people of the region. Yeah. Like, so, so, the, the Nepal people fascinate me, and I just I'd love to photograph them in that region. You know, so that's one place I think. If I was to pick one place to go, it, it would be that. But it's it's a tough question. Like sky is up there as well. Do you know what I mean? Sky really is 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 incredible, and I think sky yeah, has yeah. I think sky has untapped potential as well that we don't see uh, yeah. you know, on the photography online and stuff. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what about, and what about Monaghan? Like, have you ever, have you ever thought about shooting in Monaghan? Or? Monaghan's a great spot. What's, what's Monaghan? Great spot. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it a, yeah. a food or is it a drink? Or like, no. Uh, <laughs> no well, it's, it's a way it's of coming. life. It's, it's a way of life. I'll tell you what it is. It's a, it's a burden. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Connor. <laughs> and do you know what? Connor's a very loyal listener. He's he's definitely made it oh, to this stage of the podcast. Connor, <laughs> that's, that's it, boys. Unfollow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a legend. Uh, uh, lads, lads. It's, it's been great. I'd just Honestly. like to state for the record, I have nothing against the of man. <laughs> No, you, you're on. You're sorry, no, Mike, but you can't go back. Yeah, it's got too far. No, honestly, lads, it's been it's been absolutely deadly. Um, Brilliant. It's been so much, so much. Oh, fun. So I enjoyable. could sit here and chat for hours. Honestly, over time. You know what I mean? like, but, just, um, when the pub's open, we'll all go for a pint, and, and Mark, you could have a seven up, and you could drive us home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I can travel to Kerry, lads, you have to show me around because I've, been, I've never shot Kevin. Kerry. Absolutely, um, the invite has been extended. I know, yeah. man. I, honestly, I can't wait. So as soon as I can be there, just I'm there, and I can't wait. Yeah, particularly yeah. that Glen Car region as you spoke about, Mike. That is just that that's carry as finest, like. Well, we'll, we'll 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 do a road trip, lads. Once all this oh, is over, we'll, we'll do a road trip. 
and you can show us all these lovely locations and we'll tell no one, don't worry. I would be showing you the location and Mark would be live streaming it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, guys. So we have it. Wow. Sending oh, pin drops. Mike, oh. yeah. <laughs> Mike, Mike could be like, everybody put your phones in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> literally. You know, you know, black, black bags over our heads. <laughs> <laughs> Shut yeah, down. Uh, he, he has a device that disables any GPS communication yes, yeah. within, <laughs> within that area or geotagging. Yeah, so oh, good. God. Lads, generally, thank you very much for it's joining so us on the so podcast. Much, guys. Uh, thank, really thanks, good. guys. And, and we'll have you on again soon. All right. Cheers, right, lads. Guys. Thank, thank you. Find yourselves. <laughs>